Hey, what's going on guys? This week's video is going to be a screencast, so hopefully we can get into a little more details because it can be a little longer than the regular videos. Last time we did a screencast, it was about um, how to become a programmer, so I thought this week would be pretty cool if we talked about how to learn a programming language. And this, we can get a little more detailed with how to learn a language because we can actually go through a few step-by-step -step things of exactly what you really need to know to get you know pretty familiar with any language so let's just title this how to learn programming language and I'll try to make sure to copy and share these notes last time I lost them so I couldn't post them anywhere but this time I'll save them and just put it in the description so I think the steps that I compiled here should be pretty helpful or hopefully helpful to any language or any popular language. Obviously every language is different. It has their own like little caveats and differences and complexities, but the steps we'll go through here are some pretty general steps of what we can do to just familiarize ourselves with almost any language. So let's just get started. Okay, first thing is um, pretty basic is learn the language basics. And what do we mean by language basics? This is gonna be like, variable types, operators, basic input and output, how to prompt someone to do something and how to print it out back, uh, how to print something. This is pretty common. Every language is going to want to print something on standard out. We're going to, this is also basic program structure. How are the files structured? Basic things of the language like extensions, um, these are all really basic things. You'll probably learn this like the first week you dive into any language. So this is just number one. Um, I'm just gonna list A, B, C, D, E. It's pretty simple here, but learn the language basics just so you can get around. All right, let's go to step two. Okay, step two is gonna be learning about basic data structures or containers to use. And these are gonna be pretty similar across every single language. Let's just list them out. Um, dictionary, uh, set, list, array, and that's about it, I think. You know, we can get a little crazy here, but I would say almost 80, 90% of the things you need to do on a daily basis for most use cases, these four things are gonna get it done. So if you don't know what these are, um, let's just do a basic rundown. Dictionary is enabling you to do pretty fast lookups using unique keys. Um, just fast lookup storing of any data structure. So set is a convenient data structure to ensure uniqueness for like a group of objects if you want to make sure there's no duplicates. Um, list, if you have a dynamic list of things that changes in size. So if you guys th seen things like lists, you can add it to the front, add something to the back, add something in the middle. So it's like a, like, a very dynamic changing type of container. Arrays, I hope everyone knows about arrays. These are kind of, when you know the size of something, they're very fast to index. They are usually continuous in memory. So they have, that's the basic about array. So anyways, these all have their special purposes, but any language will have various implementations to get these things done. And it's almost all you need pretty much. Like for day-to-day -day stuff, these four will get, get you by. All right, so let's just move on to number three. And sorry, let's review number two. Learn the basic containers, how the language provides them, and how to use them. So that's about it. Third point I'm going to make is learning about basic file input output. I'm just going to abbreviate IO. So this is really the basics of interacting with any files. And files are everywhere. It's pretty much how we persist data and they're very pervasive you know if we didn't have files everything would have to exist in memory right which is pretty much impossible because that's very limited so this is going to be how to read a file in how to write a file out and there's going to be a crazy mileage for this basic concept you know and what i mean by mileage i mean like you can get really really simple with file output sorry with file io and you can get really really complicated with file io so this goes from simple reading of a text file to databases um, so if you just think about it 
file I/O, file I/O, you could just read in a really simple text file of numbers to do your homework, or you could really be interacting with a really advanced database like Postgres or MongoDB, right? Like, what exactly is a database? So, a database it's nothing. It's nothing more than just a really, really complicated file that you're reading and writing to, and having connections open with. So, when you think about it. They're definitely really, really complicated beasts, but if you look under the hood of a database, all it is is really just a file and you're just interacting with it in a really, you know, performance optimized and complicated way. So, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from these things, but in the end, all this stuff is rooted in basic file, file IO. So, this is the other basic and third thing that you must understand when you're using any language. So, that's step three. Let's go on to step four. Okay, step four for learning any language is you have to learn some basic networking using the language. And this is another super common thing. Almost 100% of the time, you're going to have to do some basic networking no matter what language you're using. So let's just write down a couple key points of basic networking. Making basic HTTP request is almost a prerequisite learn how to get post delete etc request um, overall you'll have it's really good to understand how this works understand what this protocol really means but there will be libraries to help you get this thing done and just learn the basics of how to do this how to set your requests properly how to handle responses so Networking is so pervasive right now, you know, if you're not using the internet, you are, if you're watching this video, you're using the internet. So it's just a silly question and you have to know how this stuff works. And this is probably the most basic way of learning basic networking with any language. And I would say almost any modern language has this stuff almost built in. So you're going to come across it sooner rather than later. Um, if you want to take this a step further, you can also learn some basic socket programming with your language. And if you learn some basic socket programming, this is taking HTTP, HTTP one step further because, as you know, this protocol is built on sockets. And if you learn basic socket programming, how to connect, listen, bind on a socket, um, that'll just be even better. It'll give you a deeper understanding of how this works. So. Um, basic networking, I would say at the very least, you learn how to do this part, part A. If you want to take it to the next level, you can learn part B too. But overall, I also want to say that there are libraries out there to help you do this. So don't try to reinvent the, the wheel here. Um, all these things, basic networking, it's done, tested, and highly used by so many people. There are many libraries out there to let you do that all right so that's that's just step four learning some basic networking and you have to do this for any language that you're picking up all right let's go to step five all right we're on step five i don't even know how many this is pretty impromptu so i'm just going with the flow but i think step five for this is how to build your project and language. So every language is going to be very different. You'll be using a compiled implementation of a language or perhaps it's interpreted, but overall whatever you're using you need to kind of learn the project structure and how to just organize everything. So let me just give an example of what I really mean by this. So let's say you're using C++ as your language, okay? So you'll have to learn how to build static libraries, share libraries, how to link your applications properly. All this stuff goes into the realm of C++. If you're a C++ developer, you'll know what this means, but what this means generally is that whatever you're using, you have to learn how to build it and actually make sure your code is used. So in C++, you'll be building various libraries static or shared, you'll be building various executables from application executables to testing executables and it all has to be done properly. So let's just take another example. If you're a Python developer, you'll have to figure out um, 
like how to separate out your modules well. So if you're a Python developer, you know some modules are distinct in that they're more execution style versus import style. So if you define a few important classes in these modules, how exactly do you import them and reuse them in other files? If your module is more of an execution thing and it just has to be run when you want it to be run, how do you structure that kind of module and how does this all play into this this all fit into sorry guys. So like developing a a Python project obviously is super different from developing a C++ project. Long story short is that whatever language you're using, you need to know, you know, how it's all organized, how it's all working, just so your code can execute, right? So there's going to be different things per language, and you have to be responsible. Well, you'll pick up, obviously, just how to do this, and it's another basic prerequisite. All right, so let's just move on. Okay, it's getting pretty long, but we're all on to step six, all right? Let's say st step six for learning a language is we have to learn OO or functional programming paradigm tools. So what do I mean by this? So as you know, object-oriented slash functional programming are probably the two most popular programming paradigms. There's probably more, but we don't have time to go into it. But to get any of these things done, you have to learn the tools or the constructs of what makes this possible. So for OO, you need to learn how to use classes, how to use inheritance, how to use polymorphism. Like these words should sound familiar to you if you've learned about object-oriented programming, but obviously if you don't know how to use a class in your language, you're not gonna be able to do anything object-oriented. So it's just basics there, right? So similarly, if you're using functional stuff, You'll have to learn how your language uses blocks or lambdas, how function pointers or callbacks work. So if the language you're using is highly functional, there's going to be a lot of constructs like passing in functions or various blocks to various things. And each language will have subtleties of how this works. So if you're doing very functional things, this is going to be a prerequisite for you. So. Either way, whatever whatever programming paradigm you choose to use, obviously you have to learn the tools to get it done. So that's step six. All right, guys, I'm kind of running out of time. Actually, I just realized that these videos are capped at 15 minutes, which I'll fix for next time. But this is going to be my last point. And point number seven for learning a programming language is learning the extra goodies in any language. And what I mean by extra goodies is obviously every language, Python people think they're the best, Ruby language developers think they're the best, but every language has its own bag of tricks um, or goodies that you can use to make it better. So at this point, if you learn one through six very well, you can come back to here and learn the subtleties and nice things, nice stuff of any language. So this is all going to be very different and some of you may like the goodies in one language but not the others. Um, let me just give you an example before we stop here. Like Ruby itself, if you guys are a Ruby developer, you know that they have a lot of cool methods on enumerable types which makes some very common programming techniques extremely, extremely convenient. I've been using Ruby a lot recently and they have so many cool methods on enumerable, enumerable types that it just makes some stuff really simple. So that's just an example of one of the goodies and every language comes with their own set of them. So that's my final step. And if you've done one through six very well, you can move on to seven. All right, guys, if you're still watching at this point, um, I have 30 seconds left in this video, so I'm just going to conclude it here. What I'm going to do is I'll take the notes and I'll just put them in the description so you can review them now, but I don't have time to do a full summary of the video. Let me just recap what this video is about. Um, if you were to learn any language or pick up any new language, these would be seven basic things that you would have to understand. So. I hope this would be a good guide to anyone learning a new language, and I hope it's general enough to help anyone. So that's about it.